Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a custom timer system. And let me just show you right now what it is and what I mean by this. Alright, so as you can see, I'm going to start my game right here. And as you can see, it says intermission. Three seconds left. Two, one, and boom. We are now in the game. Okay, now obviously there's nothing much here, but it is a timer system. It's how it works. And then boom, the game ended and we're back here. Now, oh, oh, we're, we're, we're stuck inside. <laughs> Uh, we actually got stuck inside our, our, our little part right there, but I forgot to anchor that, that's why. But anyways, that's how that works. So it's pretty cool. It's actually very, very simple too. People think this is hard. It's actually very, very easy. So um, don't worry. It probably takes like maybe 10, 15 minutes. All right. Well, anyways, we want to start this video and I'll show you guys how this works. All right. So first things first, we're going to actually go ahead and want to create two different areas. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our base plate here and I'm going to call this... Uh, I'm gonna call this the lobby, okay? And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the sale tool and make it a little bit smaller. Something like that's probably good. Uh, and then I'll get closer to that. And, there, and then let me make that uh, like a green right there and that'll be good. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a spawn point on it because I don't wanna fall off the map when I you know, spawn in. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start creating the other area, which would be like the actual, we'll call it game area or whatever. Or um, we can call it, um, yeah, I guess we'll call it game area. All right, we'll go over here, call it game area. And then let me actually go ahead and make another part over here on one's helper too. And then we'll call, oh wait, let me, okay, I'm going to duplicate this part, the game area part. And then I'm going to make this part uh, called game area spawn or something like that. Let me make that like a blue thing. Uh, oh, wait, wait, why can't I select it like that? It's weird. All right, that's good right there though. And then let me just go ahead and make that top. Sorry, I'm changing the surface of that top. It looks so bad, I hate it. <laughs> uh, top surface to smooth. All right, there we go, perfect. All right, I'm gonna change the color over to like green or to blue or something like that, I meant. And then we're good. All right, now that we have that game area, I guess we called it. Uh, we're gonna rename that to game area spawn because that's where we want to TP to or we'll spawn into. And then I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna duplicate that part um, by pressing Control D, and I'm gonna move it all the way over here, and then I'm gonna make another one over here called, um, what's the word? I'm gonna call this one lobby, lobby spawn, and there we go, perfect. All right, so now that when we TP back to here, we're gonna have our lobby spawn. Now, obviously, in the real world, I probably want to make these parts um, uh, uh, invisible, so I just have the transparency to one. But for now, I'll make them invisible just because why not? Actually, you know what? I'll make them. I'll make them invisible. Wait. Yeah, I'll make them invisible, actually. Um, or let me just go ahead and set the transparency to 1 for this one. And then set the transparency to 1 for this one as well. Um, perfect. Okay. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is our scripting. Now, it's honestly a really easy script, guys. A lot of you think, might think it's hard, but it's really not. Trust me. All right. So actually, um, let's set up a few variables real quick. So the first variable we want to set up is the round length. So how long do you want the actual game itself to, or to last or the game rounds? So we're going to set that for me just to equal to five for now, um, just for testing. And then we can see that later. And then we'll set the intermission length, so like the lobby length. Uh, we'll set that equal to five as well. Actually, we'll do 10. All right, um, and then we're going to go ahead and define a few of the things. We actually need to make some global values. So go ahead and go to your replicated storage right here, guys, in your Explorer, and then create an int value, and then rename that to uh, status, yeah, and then make another one, um, and then insert a uh, Boolean value, actually, and then we're going to call that in round. And that way we'll know what to call it, or true or false. All right, perfect. Now put those both in your updated storage you have it already. So an in value called status, and then a, um, a Boolean value called in route. All right, next we're going to go ahead and do is define those two things real quick, because we're going to need those in our script. So in route, you go to game dot rep storage dots in route, and then we're going to do local lobby is equal to game dot workspace dot lobby. Um, and actually, we're going to call that lobby spawn because we don't really need the lobby part itself. Uh, lobby spawn. And then we're going to go ahead and define our game area spawn. Or we probably should call it round spawn, but whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, to game area spawn. There we go. Perfect. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and start coding. Yes. All right. Also, we actually need to get our status real quick. I forgot to get the status. So local status is equal to game.replicatedStorage.status. Now, we, I don't know if you guys are wondering why I'm not just doing like replicated storage like with the service itself. 
is because replicated storage actually replicates first before the server does. So um, we, we don't need it, or we don't need to do that because it'll already be in the game. All right, it's perfect. That'll work fine. All right, next we're going to go ahead and actually make a function which counts down all the time. So what I mean by this is I'll show you. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually I'm going to make a function called local function uh, mm, intermission, or actually we'll call it... Uh, what is it like round timer round timer there we go all right and then we're gonna go ahead and do a while wait loop in here or so we'll do while wait do and that'll uh, you know wait but then it'll be true forever and then we're gonna do for i equals intermission length okay um, so we're gonna loop through the the length of intermission length by one second um, and then actually by we're gonna hit two one and then we're gonna count down by negative one so basically um, you know okay so as you can see here this uh, I might have spelled that wrong my way I'm sorry if I did yeah I just put mission it's supposed to be mission sorry <laughs> okay anyways so as you can see here it's 10 seconds right so it's gonna go from 10 to 1 and then it's gonna go down by negative 1 right these are the three values so this is what it starts at this is what it ends at and this is what it goes by so yeah all right then we're gonna do um, if it's looping through this that means in rounds you go to false right because it was looping through that then that means you go to false and then we're gonna wait one second obviously because we wanted to um, every we wanted to increment by one second and then we're gonna do status dot value is equal to intermission actually wait crap uh, status should be a um, Status should be a, or a string value, by the way, guys. Sorry, my bad. So delete status in there and then put a string value. And then rename it to status. Because we're actually going to put in different information. All right. So then we're going to do status.value is equal to intermission. Um, and then we're going to concatenate the i in there. So that way we can uh, put this amount of seconds left. And then we're going to put a space and then seconds left. And now what's that, what that's going to look like is going to be like, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like uh, intermission, you know, five seconds left. Uh, it'll, it'll look like that right now um, since we put it like that we formatted it all good so it'll look it'll look all nice all right perfect that's literally pretty much it now we're gonna go ahead and actually um, do for i equals round length one do and then what we're gonna do in here is wait a minute uh, okay wait all right, yeah, so we're gonna do okay. So now we're gonna loop through the round length, right? And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna go to one, and then we're going to um, start with or go to zero or go to negative. Crap, I'm sorry, I can't think. We're gonna start. We're gonna start at the round length, and then we're gonna go by. We're gonna go to one and go down by negative one, and then we're gonna go ahead and so in round dot values equal to false, and then we're gonna do wait one because obviously we want to, we to wait one second every time, and then we're gonna do status dot value is equal to game gets or oh, actually no we're gonna game and then we're going to actually concatenate again with the amount of seconds left uh, so just like that and then it'll look good all right perfect now um, you actually could like okay so we still need to actually make this help player teleport and stuff like that right and we could do it in here but I honestly I like just spawning it in and then using my in round to see if it changed because it looks a lot more cleaner and you don't have to look at all like the code of the status and stuff changing like that so that's what I'm gonna do so what we're gonna do is actually just spawn the function down here so we're gonna go ahead and spawn round timer and then as you can see if we actually start the game it'll actually start counting down uh, or actually it won't count down I'm really sorry I didn't even make it DUI, um, but it will that that will work. All right, but actually, what I'm going to do real quick is make that GUI. So go ahead and go to start a GUI, make a screen GUI, and then call it uh, like timer or something like that. And then we're going to put a frame. Actually, we're gonna, yeah. Actually, we'll put a frame. We'll put actually no, don't even put a frame. We're just going to put a text label, and then we're going to call. Or I'm not going to call that anything. We're going to go ahead and make the size of it one. Uh, actually, let me make it 0.5. 0.5 oh I did, didn't do that right change the scale of this to this if you want to look like mine we'll do point there we go and then we're gonna actually just scale it up like that uh, that'll look good and then we're gonna go ahead and scale the text out and then I'm gonna change the font to something nicer and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the background color or type background transparency to, to like 0.3 and then I'll change the background color actually to black and then make that like more visible there you go that looks nice okay 
All right, um, and then it'll that'll tell us the intermission length up there. Or actually, honestly, let's make the background transparency one. It looks better with no, nothing back there. All right, perfect. Um, but anyways, we still need to actually change that value. But it will actually start running this thing, so that's good. All right, anyways, now what we need to do is actually um, change the values, right? So whenever it teleports, or whenever, sorry, not teleports, but whenever it switches rounds, we want to actually change the value, or change this up here to look right. So what we're going to do is actually insert a local script up here, um, into our timer screen GUI and then we're just gonna go ahead and get status because we're gonna need that so again roughly storage dot status and then we're gonna get our actually uh, yeah and then we're gonna get status and then we're gonna get the player actually we don't even need a player and then we're gonna no we're gonna get the GUI so we're gonna do um, local timer is equal to pull wait a minute no, 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 we don't even need any of this. Okay, no, all we need to do is do status.changed connect function, and then we're gonna define our button that we're that we have, or our text label, sorry. So we're gonna do local text label is equal to actually let's, let's call it something better. We'll call it like a, a timer display. There we go. So local timer display is equal to script dot parent dot timer display, and then we're going to do status dot changed. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change the the timer display dot text equal to the status dot value because we we already formatted it all nice in there, and then that'll work just fine. It should work just fine. All right, perfect. All right, so now if we go and test that out, it should work. Now. Uh, but as you probably already know, there's one thing we're missing, which is a teleportation. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But as you can see, our intermission, eight seconds left, seven seconds left. And it's going to count down all the way to, you know, one second. And then it's going to go ahead and switch to the other game. And as you can see, it, it did. All right. Um, but we obviously didn't teleport. And we didn't actually add that code in yet. So it makes sense. So what we're going to do is actually use our in round thing up here. Because, like, like I said, we could do all the code in this function right here, which is a round timer. But I like to just count it off there and do like the timer stuff there. Personally, I think it looks cleaner when I actually do everything else um, up here that's not related to the timer stuff, right? All right. Anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just check to see if the in round value changed. Remember, because we set it down there, we change it down here when actually when it's in the round. So then we're gonna do in round dot changed connect function, and then we're gonna do wait one just because. Um, uh, actually, I'll explain, actually, I'll leave that for now. I'll explain that later. Um, but we'll just do if in rounds dot value is equal to true. So if they are in the round, then what we're going to do is loop through all the players in the game, uh, and then we're going to actually let me do this. We're going to loop through all the players in the game, and then we're going to yes. Okay, sorry, I, I'm trying to think. Okay, we're going to loop through all the players in the game, and then we're going to teleport them all to our. Um, teleport them all to our game area yes sorry i don't know why i think we're so long to say all right so yeah well, all i'm doing right now is i'm looping through the, all the players in the game by doing game.players get children uh for underscore players and then i'm going to loop through all the players in the game and then i'm going to get the character and i'm going to set the root part of the character uh c frame to the game area spawn c frame and there we go and then we're going to do the exact same thing for um if it's uh, if it's not in the round, so if it's if it's uh, sorry, I'm trying to think. If it's uh, going to the uh, lobby again, so that means we're going to do else. So we're going to do if it's not equal to true, that means it's going to the lobby. So if it's not in the round, so then we're going to copy and paste that again, and then the only thing we're going to change is just our um, our lobby spawn. So there you go. All right, so now it'll work just fine as you can see here. We can run the game and it will work just good. Also, we put something up here like a round variable, something like that, and that'll be good. All right, then we're gonna hit play, and then it should work just fine. So as you can see here, nine seconds left, eight seconds left, seven seconds left. Um, I don't know why I'm counting so long. I probably should have made it long, or probably should have made it shorter. <laughs> um, but as you can see, oh, it, it didn't, it didn't teleport. Oh, okay, well, that's that's a bit of an issue. Um, all right, what is going on here? Okay, wait, it didn't teleport. Uh, so why didn't it teleport? Let's do this. So char dot humanoid dot root part. Um, hmm. That's weird. So in round up value. Uh, 
Oh, I didn't ever set it equal to true. That's my bad, guys. So as you can see, you should show you set that to true down there. I actually made a mistake. My bad, guys. I didn't set that to true. All right, now you hit play, and it should work just fine. So let's go and test that out again. And then we're going to actually, you know what? Let me make that shorter. <laughs> All right, five seconds. There we go. I'll make this actually three seconds. The round will be three seconds. Intermission will be five. All right, let's test it out and see if it works. So let's see. Five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. One and as you can see, we teleported right there, and we are flying. But that's because, <laughs> okay, that's my bad. I forgot to make these parts uh, can collide set the off. So let me actually change that real quick, so we don't do that. And then what I'm gonna do also is I forgot to tell you. Remember that weight I put up there? Um, I actually had that there because if you couldn't notice, what happens is it actually teleports right when it hits the one. But we don't want that. But also, I think I found a better way around that. I think about it. But let me try this out again. So we're gonna do three two one and then boom now we're here and then we're here again and then boom now we're back over there so as you can see we're switching maps this right now this is the intermission lobby and now we're in the game right um and then we're in the intermission lobby and now we're in the game now i'm pretty sure actually i put the weight here because what happens is when it changes we don't make it teleport right away but i'm pretty sure actually what we should do is just actually set that equal to zero um and that's how it would fix let me actually try that out i want to see if that works um it'll go to zero not just one, which makes more sense. Um, but let's see this out. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. All right. So as you can see, that's that probably seems better. But you can do whichever way you want. All right, guys. That's pretty much. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, like always, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe for more awesome Roblox stripping tutorials just like this one. And if you have any other questions, guys, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them with all that good stuff. But yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe for more. Leave a like if you enjoyed. All right, peace.